Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I want to give Raid the opportunity to make some tweaks to the live arena before it comes. So I'm going to give some feedback on just like three areas where I feel like these changes were made before this goes live. It's going to improve people's gaming experience. I also want to do a bit of a deep dive in this video on the new gear set Zeal, which I think I got almost 100% wrong when I spoke about it yesterday in terms of who I think it would benefit, where it would benefit. As Saf, the brains of HH Gaming, the math genius, has done a, a spreadsheet for us, which I'm going to go into, hopefully call it out properly this time. I'm sure Saf will do a deep dive breakdown himself, though, when he feels the need to, when he's got all of the information. But I just want to kind of like, set right what i said yesterday yeah it just turns out my gut feel was just not right was not accurate on this set when you actually start to pump the numbers in and it does something which almost in my brain is like the opposite of what it should do so quite interesting to look at so let's start with one of the areas which which i feel like raid should try and change before this goes out and it's really around the champion select phase ban phase now the way they've got this playing out at the moment is you you select five champions and then each person gets to ban one. I just feel like a much better system here would be each player selects three champions, somebody is banned, and then you select your final two. The reason for that is once you've selected three and someone's banned, you can still change direction. You can still bring in a key champion. I feel like selecting five, banning one, it, it actually leads to potential disaster like does it mean that everybody's got to pick two nukers every time they do a select phase does everyone have to pick two speed auras every single time everyone have to pick two speed boosters if you were building a speed team by the way um like it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that they would do the ban phase at the end of the five picks i feel like it's a, a really poor implementation even if it was pick four ban one select your final one at least then you can sub in someone who makes some sense. So that's my view. I, f I feel like the ordering is just wrong. Also, I cannot see anywhere on here, and it might be that we're just not seeing it on these, on these kind of clips, but there's nowhere that's telling me player power. And player power is actually really important to try and understand what type of build I'm up against. So for example, if it said here, player power 400k, I would know that a lot of this enemy team are a resistance build. And I can make sure that I bring in champions to kind of counter the enemy resistance team. Whereas if it said 200k, I'd know that they were built perhaps tanky, but not with high resistance. I wouldn't need uh, like an increased accuracy champion to, to do the job of removing their buffs, stuff like that. So I just feel like there's a couple of things missing to give us the information for the peak ban phase to just make it a more competitive scene. The second thing I want to talk about here is... The kind of new great hall, uh, the area bonuses they're calling it. And this is something which I'll, I'll just call it out. Odd One Gaming came up with in Content Creator Chat, and it just makes complete sense. One of the areas you can improve is the um, potion keeps, right? Potion keeps. Now, it's, it's a very low priority area. Very low. I wish it was just a case of perhaps dungeons being one group. And they added something like Doom Tower as one group. But currently, Doom Tower does not sit in here. Feels like if you're going to do all PvE content in this area, Doom Tower would be a really good one to add in. And, and it doesn't look like they've got areas such as, you know, things like Iron Twins here and stuff like that, where, again, you kind of really need the, the stat boost. So, you know, some of the old school dungeons, yeah, okay, you've got hard modes now, and that's going to help you get through the hard modes. But... Um, yeah, you know, Demon Lord, I don't know, it just feels like they're missing a couple of areas which really are the hard content in the game. So the last thing I want to call out before we get onto the new set is basically, there's a couple of things. Firstly, time in game is, is harsh right now. You know, Raid has got a phenomenally high amount of time required in game if you want to do everything, okay? That needs to change. But I also feel like Raid needs to learn from previous mistakes. So in terms of changing time, we could literally just half the amount of uh, tokens we've got here for 3v3, double the rewards, yeah? Half the amount of fights, double the rewards. It's a win-win. 
everyone everyone feels a little bit less pressure and you still get the amount of rewards that you get right now i think that would be good but one of the mistakes that raid have made specifically with tag team arena is this whole kind of like competitive scene i get very little difference trying to play at a high level other than perhaps personal enjoyment if you want that okay but playing at a high level here in gold four trying to win gold four be the best player in gold four in tag team arena i get very little difference from being a scrub in gold one that's true right and, and in gold one i just chill in gold four every fight's a battle every fight's insanely hard the competition side is good in gold four but there's zero reason to be there there's zero competitive element to tag team arena right now which is just crazy tag team arena has been around for a long long time yeah a long long time only in one instance since it's ever been around did they have a competitive side for someone to try and get a high position in gold four one time in like whatever it's been a couple of years or something a year and a half i don't know how long it's been it's been a long time that makes zero sense pvp player versus player there's meant to be a reason to push high there's meant to be and there's zero reason right now now even the bazaar doesn't make any sense early on you get drexar in here but there's no like big champions to gain whatever in gold i get the same stuff that i can get in gold one as i do in gold four not that i think any of this should be gated behind what level you are anyway none of this should be gated it should literally be prizes for the best players rewards for the best players even if it's avatars and that type of stuff there should be something here gear whatever for the best players it doesn't happen right now and i think looking at the model that they were talking about on the video yesterday kind of in danger of it looking the same as that i'm sure they must have long-term views of doing like an esports type thing with this a bit like summoners wars do now and that would be cool but please please make sure there is a reason to be a top tier player in the arena it makes no sense otherwise uh there even needs to be regular tournaments for it or you know some sort of push towards players wanting to compete otherwise what is the point in this game mode okay let's get on to talk about this new set then so zeal yeah yesterday i was basically calling out that i thought this would be a good set based on this quick damage as a, a base more damage for every 25 percent your enemy have so if the enemy's got 100 percent hp you would do 30 percent more damage and i kind of called it out that i thought that this would only really benefit people that already ignored sig significant amounts of defense someone like a baron or georgian or whatever um now saf has put together a spreadsheet for us here to play around with different scenarios and it's quite surprising actually okay so this part is going to be pretty math heavy so apologies if you're not down for that also no doubt i'll probably get something wrong in here as well so apologies for that in advance uh what's going on basically what we've got here is we've got a comparison between savage and lethal or savage or lethal plus cruel versus zeal plus cruel okay and, and the main difference here is savage um or lethal will ignore 25 percent of the enemy's defense Whereas Zeal's giving us that 30% more damage. And obviously Cruel is doing the same on both sides. So what we're looking at first is just a, a raw hit. Doesn't matter what the raw hit number is, honestly, because it doesn't make a difference to the info. But a raw hit smack of, say, 40k, then multiplied up by the amount of crit damage that you've got. The amount of crit damage you've got does make a little bit of a difference because Zeal is giving you crit damage in its set. So almost like the higher crit damage you go on a base build the less impact that zeal uh, benefit will give you versus if you were lower then it would give you more impact but for for this we're talking about 250 percent crit damage build which i think for you know, maybe like a gold five team is about right we're then looking at how much of as how much ignore defense can we get within our skills so i'm going to start by looking at a zero percent nobody uh, no defense is ignored somebody like uh if we're talking a high-end arena champion or certainly someone who hits hard yeah we're talking about a trunda she does not have any inbuilt ignore defense mechanics in her kit used to be a top tier arena champion but nowadays not so top tier so if 
Uh, by the way, if you're an average player, she's still insanely good. <laughs> but for like high end plat, not a top tier at all. So if Trunda was to step up and use Savage um, and Cruel against like a, you know, a squishy ish opponent, somebody who's got around 3,000 defense, that defense is going to give you about 73% damage mitigation. Yeah, which means that when you start to then ramp in things like Savage and Cruel, you ignore another 30% of the defense. And you end up doing a smack for about 50k. Now, what's interesting to me is actually Zeal gives you a higher percentage of damage than the Savage and Cruel on someone like a Trunda. I thought it definitely would not go this way, by the way. But the reason for that is, is that defense mitigation is not a linear thing. Uh, and I've, I've tried to just kind of work through on the right hand side here what different defense numbers could look like. So if we were trying to hit someone who is a nuker themselves, they probably got quite a low base defense. If we put decreased defense on them, it goes down to like 1500. And if we then ignore defense on them as well, actually they're sitting there with defense of about 1000, which means they're only mitigating 40% of your hits, it means you're doing a ton of damage, right? They should be dead. However, if you're trying to hit a tank that's got 5000 defense and then gets increased defense put on them, gets them up to 8000 defense, when you then hit with the ignore defense ability, it still takes them down to 5,600, but 5,600 actually doesn't give you much of a difference in damage mitigation than if they were still at 8,000. Yeah, the, the defense mitigation is so small at that point, you're only gaining about a 5,000 damage swing. Okay, which is why champions that inherently ignore defense become so much stronger because they get you down to these lower levels of defense where it actually makes a, a decent amount of difference to mitigate the defense number. So actually, if we were smacking into a tank and we were using zeal on a trunda, it would give us significantly more damage because when you use the, the savage and cruel, you're getting yourself down to a point where the mitigation isn't making a lot of sense. So actually, you end up doing a lot more damage. Doesn't mean you're going to kill people uh, if they've got 8,000 defense, if, you, if you're going straight into them with a damage set. But you will get a lot more damage out of it for a straight damage dealer with no ignore defense. If you've got someone that ignores, say, 25% defense with a smack, then things start to get a bit different because it's much more even between the two. Uh, and if you're hitting into someone who's not at 100% health, then the returns become dramatically worse, obviously. So, you know, if you've half smacked someone and they've just kind of healed up a bit, after that, the zeal set drops off significantly. But yeah, if you've already got ignore defense of about 25%, then you are like smack on top of that savage, uh, savage and cruel, giving yourself that 50% ignore defense ability, then you start to get some, some serious gains. And let's say you proc Helm Smasher on that as well, then it definitely favors the Savage and Lethal and Cruel over Zeal. So it definitely depends on the champion. If you've got someone like a Baron, yeah, who is relatively meta right now, I'd say. Someone like a Baron who's A3, ignores shield, ignores block damage, as well as 50% of the target's defense. So that's the example down the bottom here. If we've got a 50% ignore defense ability and you put on Savage and Cruel, which gives you another 30% bonus ignore defense, giving you a total of 80%, then you actually start to get yourself into a position against tanks where you're ignoring enough defense that you get them down to that, that kind of sweet spot number that you can hit them hard. Yeah, so actually if you're using Zeal on a Baron, significantly worse damage the i guess the tankier someone is the better off you are with the savage and cruel ability yeah and the least tanky who and it's champions you should kill anyway the squishy ones there's actually not a lot of difference between the two if you've got someone like a uh, shamal who's going to be ignoring 100 percent defense on his a2 then the zeal set becomes significantly better royal huntsman's another good example yeah you get significantly more damage uh in fact you know this would be 140k hit with savage and cruel obviously you're ignoring defense already um but you'd be at 195 5k hit with zeal 
it would also be the same i think if you were if you were pushing uh just like crit damage sets on someone like a, a shamal zeal would just straight up be better but definitely more interesting and more complicated than i thought it was going to be and there's a lot of argument to say because zeal was going to be farmable uh through through chests let me just show you this quick so there's definitely an argument to say because every time you win 35 battles you will get a chest and within that chest will be some of this juicy gear i guess this is a gold chest drop not a bronze one but you will get a chance to get um both of the gear sets in these arena chests 35 wins that's let's call it uh if you do 10 battles a day let's call it twice a week once to twice a week you're going to get one of these chests so there's probably a decent chance you're going to get zil gear faster than you get savage gear um, but the cool thing i guess is even if you were using any style of nuka i think zil gear is actually going to stand up against savage gear really well so it's much better than i thought it was going to be uh, when you actually start to look at the maths of it and it is pretty situational in terms of when it's better and when it isn't i hope that made some sense <laughs> if it didn't i'm sure saf will do a better explanation of it on hh gaming channel go and sub to that channel as well uh, and saf thank you for the spreadsheet my man uh, anyway guys i've been hell hades i'll see you later